here we are in your front yard. Tell me a little bit more about what's coming. So the All Austin Studio Tours, um, you know, they're keeping it safe, doing everything online, except for the option of outdoor art. And so as a painter, not really the best way to display my work, just set it up outside and hope for the best. So, you know, I was thinking about how public art has always um, lifted me and especially in times of crisis when I really needed that affirmation of like, what's the purpose and, you know, how do we get through life together? Um, and I just wanted to contribute to, to what's going to be happening in Austin. So I'm just, I'm going off the canvas, off the wood panel, still using some wood though. So I found this branch in my neighborhood, loved the curves, you know, got the curving lines that speak to me. And it's been sitting here for a few months, had no idea what I'd do with it. And now I know it's going to be part of the tour. So imagine lots of yarn, imagine lots of color, imagine crocheted mushrooms, because why not? <laughs> You know, that's been my art therapy, making those mushrooms. And I, you know, it's just funny and silly. And then also this tree, which is currently part of Halloween for us, will be transformed into its own art piece. And, you know, again, just like color. I just want to put color out into the world. So I'm going to be draping it um, with lots of fabric. Orange is definitely going to be one of the big colors. Uh, involved and and part of the inspiration for that was um, I lived in New York when the gates happened so that's an art installation by um, two artists named Christo and Jean-Claude and they filled Central Park with this orange fabric and it just wandered along all the trails and and people came out hundreds of thousands of people in the middle of winter and there was so much curiosity and joy and community and and I just want to tap some into that feeling. And, um, you know, I hope that people who come and see what I've made talk to each other and, you know, get, a, get um, that feeling of what is happening and surprise and maybe a little joy. So I hope you come out. And if you can't, I promise I'll have lots of pictures and video posted and ready for you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Hallie Ray. Right. Making these mushrooms was the starting point. I didn't have a reason to crochet them other than it felt soothing at the end of long and anxiety-filled days. It gave me something to do with my hands while my husband read to me and our daughters. We weren't going out and needed some socializing at the end of the day. It connected me to my grandma, who taught me the basic stitch when I was little. It gave me a chance to dig out my old bins of yarn and think about color combinations. It was just an act of making just to make. I do not think of myself as an installation artist. While I dabble in 3D work, my main practice is abstract paintings that are meant to hang indoors. And yet I have always loved public outdoor art especially the kind that appears in unexpected places or inserts absurd forms or colors into natural settings. This year's shift to online and outdoor art for the studio tours became an opportunity for me to explore something new. It was also a chance to take these little things I was making and turn them into something extravagant. Yarn bombing the huge branch that had been sitting in my front yard was the next step in my idea a way to colorize this lovely curling piece of nature and also a way to connect it back to my little mushrooms that would look so silly perched outside. I had been knitting longer pieces again just to pass the time and quickly figured out that I could stitch them onto the log and also just wrap it in general with any yarn I could find. Next came a little heavy lifting. Um, my husband enjoyed this part a lot. We had a tree, actually more than one, that fell in our backyard 
several years ago and they were cut into pieces and we'd been using them as benches or random things to prop stuff on. And I realized I could add them to my curling branch scene. Wasn't quite prepared to cover them in yarn, so I spray painted them first. I really enjoyed using the different colors of spray paint. As you can see, I tend to work with more than one can in my hand at a time. And don't worry, I wore a mask for most of this. I was just doing some touch up here. Arranging the objects felt like making a painting, moving them, stepping back to see how it felt and tweaking over and over again until the shapes and colors were conversing back and forth in just the right ways. Then it was time to prep my fabric, attaching grommets to the upper edges of each piece so I could easily string them up from the branches. I mentioned earlier that I was inspired by the gates and those billowing yards of orange golden fabric as a painter who focuses on color, I am most excited by intense colors that play off of each other. I knew I wanted orange. It is a symbol of joy for me, a color that had lifted me and so many people in New York when the city was still recovering from the losses of 9-11. When I had the idea to make a color-based installation in my front yard, after the yarn, orange fabric was my next thought. I collected different shades, whatever was on sale or the last bolt at my local store. Hanging the fabric was a really lovely couple of days. It was that sweet spot of weather when it's sunny and almost cool, breezy, no mosquitoes or pollen or rain. If you live in Austin, you know how magical that weather can feel. I like to think it infused my installation with even more joy. Taking my time and letting the branches guide me, I got to pull myself out of my daily struggles and step back into all the things I love, nature, color, slowly and methodically making something that just makes sense to me and feels right. The blue plastic strips are the cuttings of these ridiculous inflatable toys that my kids got when they were preschoolers. They had been punctured and gathering dust in the shed. I'm so glad I'd never satisfied the urge to toss them because the color theory painter in me needed a counterpoint to all that orange, the contrasting color of blue. I also love that a few times a day, the sunlight will shine through the plastic and cast a blue-green shadow on the ground. Nature's magic. And finally, we circle back to those little mushrooms. Installing them today after weeks of building this installation was so satisfying. The main trick was figuring out how to attach them to the logs in a way that would keep them standing upright despite their soft and squishy stems. Once I solved that problem, it was so fun just to play with the arrangements. And then finally, to step back and think about sharing my creation with the people who want to see art in this city. Thanks for looking, and I hope you enjoy my ode to the joy of color and mushrooms. <laughs>